All right, everybody, welcome to Happy Healthy Holiday Pet. So this is Allie Phillips, and it's really awesome to have you all here. So my company is called Manifested Harmony, and I am an animal protection attorney. I'm a certified health coach, advanced crystal master, Reiki master teacher, and IET master instructor. I also educate extensively on essential oils for people and pets. So welcome, welcome. I'm glad to have you all here tonight. And if you have not grabbed a copy of either of my books, they make great holiday presents. And through the end of the year, if you use coupon code Zoom, you can get the bundle for 10% off. So that is my gift back to everybody. All right, we're just gonna dive right in. All right, we're gonna dive right in. And I, for those of you who are here live, I would love for you to type in the chat and I'm not gonna disclose anybody's names, but type in the chat and tell me how you're feeling going into the 2020 holiday season, because today is what, November 17th? So here in the US, we have Thanksgiving coming up. And I'm just wondering how you all are feeling. So feel free to type that in the chat. Because as I talk with a lot of people, we are not going to have the normal holiday busyness and stress that we normally have. We're not gonna be running store to store, going for those Black Friday deals, running all over the place, going to the grocery store, baking up a storm for Thanksgiving or for Christmas or for Hanukkah. It's a little scaled down for a lot of us. So I'm seeing in the chat, thankful that family is healthy, feeling a little abandoned by family and friends due to what I call the thing. I will not give it energy, I call it the thing. So, so yes, yeah, so the normal holiday busyness and stress that we typically feel is gonna be different and it's gonna still be there, but it's gonna be different because our 2020 stress is now filled with the thing, the pandemic, which is creating financial stress for a lot of people and it's creating sadness. And even during a normal holiday season, there is often a level of sadness because we, we miss those who have passed on. We miss those who are just not living with us anymore. Um, but the sadness this year is different. And it, it all revolves around everything that we've dealt with in 2020. And yeah, seeing in the, in the chat, slightly uncertain and conflicted about what to do. Do we gather? Don't we gather? Is it safe? A lot of unknowns. Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of unknowns. Nobody knows what to do. We don't, we don't know the right path, no matter who you listen to. It's a lot of conflicting information. So knowing that our beloved companion animals feed off of our stress, how do you think they're gonna be feeling this holiday season? Because normally they just take on the franticness that, that we put out as we're running around and going to parties and, and having people over at our house and cooking and baking and wrapping presents and putting up the decorations and tearing them down. That busyness can actually cause issues for our companion animals. But now look at what we're dealing with and how that could impact them. So it is really important that we do all that we can to keep ourselves centered and balanced. So one thing, so I said at the beginning before I started the recording, please grab an essential oil, put it in your hands and smell it. Did you all do that? That is really important. And if you don't have an essential oil, grab a crystal 
And if you don't have either of those, take your hands, rub them together, put one over your heart and one over your stomach. Because it is so incredibly important that we keep it together for so many reasons. And if we can't do it for ourselves or even for the people around us, I know that we will do it for our pets. I know that we will because I see the names that are here. <laughs> and I know you will. I know you will. So what you're feeling is normal in a time that is not normal, but it is really important that we find a way to not be stressed and to not panic during this time. And I say this on the eve of Michigan going back into a lockdown, not as severe as in March, but pretty severe. Not gonna panic, no need to panic. Everything's gonna be okay. So I wanna go through 10 simple steps that you can take to make sure that your pets enjoy the holiday season and you too, to enjoy them. And that's the, that's the thing, you know, when I think about holidays in the past, people get so busy buying stuff, stuff that frankly we don't need, stuff that ends up in a landfill. <laughs> We buy all the stuff and it's not fulfilling to us. So I really believe that what we're dealing with is giving us a major timeout and recalibrating ourselves. So I, I hope you've taken that lesson this year. It's been a tough lesson for a lot of people, but we don't need to be doing so much. We certainly don't need to be buying so much, especially unnecessary stuff. And so it's a, it's a time to really go within and be grateful for what we have, be more thoughtful in our giving and whoever you can spend time with, that's precious time. But I, uh, but I wanna give you some, some tips specific for our companion animals, but remember that how we are feeling, they are going to pick it up and they're gonna feel it too. So I'm gonna talk about these 10 tips and I'm also gonna send you a little cheat sheet that I created. It's a nice little graphic. You're welcome to share it online, um, but I'm gonna email that to you when I send you the recording. So tip number one, don't change the amount or the quality of time that you spend with your pets. It is really important to keep the same schedule and to do the same things because it's consistency in how you relate to your pets that keep them happy and healthy. So during the holiday season, things get a little hectic, things get a little crazy. It may not happen like that this year, but either way, keeping that consistency. So if you're walking your dog at certain times of the day, keep that consistency. You know, if you are home doing, doing certain things, keep that consistency, keep that quality of time. So I actually think that this year, because of all that is happening, it's actually going to be easier on our pets so long as we keep ourselves centered and balanced because we're the ones that can really throw it off for them because everything else around us is slowing down and calming down. You know, we're not gonna be running off to all of these holiday parties. And I'll tell you, my cats didn't like it when I would come home at eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night after a holiday party, and they still hadn't had dinner. That threw off their schedule. So maintaining a schedule is really important. Number two, giving your pets a safe and quiet space in your home for when you do have family and visitors coming over because while some pets thrive being around visitors, others get stressed out. You know, they wanna know what are these people doing in my space? So it's being sensitive to what your pet wants and needs, not what you want for them. So 
don't drag the cat out or don't drag the dog out to meet everybody if they don't want to. It's giving them a safe space. So what can that safe space look like? You know, it, you could put them in a bedroom, a spare room. You could diffuse your calming pet safe essential oils. If you have crystals, you can put them in there. You can play calming music, classical music. Smooth jazz is a favorite of pets. If there's a television, you can put on Animal Planet or the Hallmark Channel and just make it a really cozy, nice space for them. So that's number two, just giving them a quiet space. And, you know, for example, when I put up my Christmas tree, it is, <laughs> it is a full on battle with me and that tree and getting everything on it and getting the lights on it. And sometimes I get a little stressed out. I know this about me. My cats come upstairs and they got their oils and their crystals. They got a Hallmark movie playing on the TV. They do not need to get wrapped up in me tackling that Christmas tree. So, you know, keep that in mind, giving them a safe and a quiet space, especially during stressful moments. The third thing is being consistent in your pet's diet. So if you are not somebody who feeds, you know, human type food, then this is not the time to do that during the holiday season. You know, your cat or your dog may be thrilled if you have Tom the turkey on your dining room table, but if you're sharing it and that is not normal for them to eat your turkey or anything like that, then it could cause digestive upset. And the one thing that can stress out a pet is the food that can then cause digestive upset and then stress you out and then it starts creating a cycle. You're stressed and then they get stressed and the digestive cycle gets stressed. So, you know, if you do feed a diet that is natural, maybe you make your own food, whether it's raw or cooked, that's different. But all of a sudden feeding them food from the dining room table that you normally don't feed them, that is gonna cause some digestive upset. If it happens, if it happens, using your, you know, and I, and I can only recommend Young Living with Pets because of the purity, but using oils like Digize or Paragize or Peppermint will, will calm their, their digestive upset. But just be cautious of that because that is something that, you know, that can really cause them to have a stressful holiday time. The fourth tip is to be really cautious about live holiday plants that you bring into your home or while walking your dog. So if you, if you really want to check it out, go to the ASPCA Poison Control Center website and you can learn more. Um, but these are the ones that you, you really want to avoid. Holly, mistletoe, poinsettias, Christmas cactus, and even Christmas tree preservative that goes in the base, basin of the live tree, because these are all gonna cause pretty severe digestive upset and stomach upset. Now, back in the day, there was a lot of belief that holly um, and mistletoe and poinsettia were actually deadly, and they've kind of rolled back on that, but it, it does create a lot of digestive upset. So you don't want your pets getting into those. I definitely do not have live plants in my house because, well, I have three cats and they just love to chew on everything. So be really careful about that. And if you do have a live Christmas tree, the preservative, which I've never had a live tree because I'm allergic to um, pine and definitely can't have it in my home. But when I looked up what it's made of, uh, <laughs> you, do not, you do not want pets drinking that water. That actually causes a lot of pets to go to the emergency room during the holidays. And then tinsel, definitely not a live plant, but tinsel on the trees, huge no-no for pets. And to be honest, I haven't seen tinsel sold in the stores in years. But if you have it, that, that is a big no-no. It's beautiful. It looks great on a Christmas tree. Just be really cautious and just don't put it up. 
just don't put it off because if it is swallowed, that can really create some internal issues that you do not want to deal with. All right, number five. Okay, so this one, especially as we are buying presents for our pets. I mean, how? okay, show me in the chat. How many of you buy holiday presents for your pets? Like I do, they each have their own stocking. Even my kitties who have passed away, st I still hang their stocking on the fireplace mantle. So we buy them toys. And most toys are frankly toxic for pets. They are. If it has a label made in China, don't buy it. Because the research has come back with high levels of formaldehyde and heavy metals. And what do our pets do with toys? They put them in their mouth. As soon as it's in their mouth, whatever is in that toy is soaking in through the mucous membranes and going into the bloodstream. So be really, really cautious about the toys that you buy. Read the labels. When I go into the pet stores, I am horrified that everything is made in China. And I'm kind of vocal about it. I'm really surprised that I haven't been kicked out of stores because I, I literally go from toy to toy and shout out loud, made in China, made in China, made in China. It, it's really disturbing. So consider buying organic handmade toys from stores on Etsy. I, I love patronizing the home-based businesses on Etsy. And if you just Google organic handmade toys, you're going to have to check and make sure that they're safe for your dogs. But for my cats, I actually buy baby toys and stuffed animals, as long as they don't have anything chewable that can come off. Because then I can be rest assured that it was handmade, you know, there's quality control, and the ingredients are organic because there's some scary stuff in, in the toys that are sold in stores. So, you know, be really cautious about that. And if you have a relationship with your local pet store, ask them to reach out into the community for people who are making their own pet toys. I mean, that, that's such a great thing to do. So that is tip number five. Tip number six is all about quality time with your pet. So it's different than the first one about not changing your schedule with your pet. This is about spending time with your pet. So talk to them. I mean, how many of you actually talk to your pets? I know that may sound crazy. Well, maybe not to all of you, <laughs> but they actually do understand us. They may not understand the English language, but they do understand us. So when you're walking your dog, leave your cell phone at home. I see so many people walking their dog and they're obsessed with their phone. I'm surprised that they don't like walk into a, a pit and fall down. When you walk your dog, let your dog teach you how to unwind on the walk. Let your dog teach you how to be aware of your surroundings. I mean, how many of you have dogs that when you're walking them, they are so hyper aware of everything around them? You know, ooh, there's a stick. Ooh, there's a patch of grass. Ooh, there's a tree. They are trying to teach us. So when you can ditch the technology and be with them, they will teach you how to be aware and be present in your environment and really step away from your to-do list and to connect with nature. And then if you have cats, what do cats want us to do? Well, they want us to nap and rest and lay in yoga positions. And that is something that we can do. They're trying to tell us to slow down and to de-stress. So, you know, in, in my energy healing classes that I teach uh, that relate to pets, I talk about this and how people who are dog people need that energy from dogs about being social, about being present in nature and really focusing on 
the walk and the time outside. Whereas people who are cat people need to de-stress and calm down and be more cat-like in their life. So when you're spending this quality time with your pets, you know, tell them what's going on. You know, tell them if you have visitors coming over, if you're expecting visitors, if you're going to be going away, if there's any change in their schedule, you may think that they don't necessarily understand, but they actually do. They actually do. And I could get into a whole discussion about how animal communication works. Just talk to them and they can interpret what you're saying. All right, let's see. Um, number, what number are we on? Four, five, six, seven, number seven. Okay, this goes back to how I started this talk about monitoring your stress. So whatever you need to do to stay centered and balanced throughout the day, especially when you're home with your pets or you're walking your dog or you're just at home, that is so important. So I often tell a story and this, this was, oh gosh, this was way back in the day with my cat, Sammy. Um, he actually passed away in 2012, um, but he, he would literally vomit when I would come home because I was living in the DC area, doing my legal career, traveling all the time. And when I would come home, I was a bundle of stress and nerves. And he took my energy the best way he knew how and expelled it. And he would vomit <laughs> right at my feet, which then caused more stress for me because I was worried about him. Once I figured that out, I learned to de-stress before I came home. And one simple technique that I did was I did an energy sweep across my body. I literally just took my hands and I just swept my energy field. I just swept my hands down across my body, kind of like dry brushing, but you're doing it in the energy field. And Sammy never vomited like that again, once I figured, it that, figured that out. So whether it's you do that, you use your essential oils, you use your crystals, you work with your energy healing modalities that you know, or you meditate, being centered, especially during this time in our history, being centered and calm is going to help us and in turn is going to help them. I mean, it is really the philosophy that they tell us on airplanes, you have to put your oxygen mask on first before you can help anybody else. It's not being selfish, it's self-care so that you can then care for others. So monitor your stress levels. All right, eight on the list energy healing for your pet. So how do you do this if you've not been attuned to energy healing? So I know many of you have that I, that I can see here on the live call, but here's one thing that you can do that I actually asked you to do at the beginning. Rub your hands together and then just place your hands over your pet's heart and then on the back, of their spine. So you're basically sandwiching their heart center. And while it's not as strong as getting an attunement to a specific energy healing modality, we all have this energy in us. And so this is something very calming that they will enjoy. And I would encourage you to give it a try tonight. Just take your hands, rub them together and just sandwich that heart center and play them soothing music, especially if you have people over, you know, you've got parties or gatherings going on, or just at the end of the day, just to settle down because it, it'll help you, it'll center your energy, and it's really going to help them. And it's a really simple thing to do. And you can always do it to yourself first, because we don't want to really put our energy on our pets. So we, that's why at the beginning I said, just take your hands, put it over your heart and put it over your stomach. Now, why did I pick those two areas? Your heart is your relationship center, but your stomach is your power center. And that's where stress and anxiety, anger, that's where it stores there. And you just put your hands over those areas and breathe. 
it'll center you and balance you and you'll feel calmer. And then you can do the same to your pet. Number nine on the list is showing gratitude to your companion animals during the holiday season. Well, really all year long, but during the holiday season and thanking them for being in your life because they're teachers, they are here to serve you. They are here on a specific mission for you. And even those that have passed on, you know, whether you're, you have a prayer practice or meditation practice, or even when you're just out walking your dog or you're in nature, just thank your companion animals who have passed on for being in your life because they're still there. And then last but not least, you know I got to talk about essential oils. So if you, and I'm not going to go into all the nitty gritty details because um, I think a lot of you have been to my oily pet classes. The moral of the story with essential oils and pets is it really is whether the brand is safe. It is not whether peppermint is safe or lavender is safe or frankincense. If the brand is safe, the oils are safe, period. I, I talk about this in the oily pet book in greater detail. But once you have pet safe essential oils, the biggest thing is to let them choose. We never first force, force an oil on a pet. And so it's simply holding open a bottle and seeing if they come to it to smell it, seeing if they're okay with it. And if they are, go light in the diffuser because if it is strong for you, it's really strong for them because of their heightened sense of smell. And so I often get the question about, you know, diffusing holiday essential oils that contain cinnamon and clove and nutmeg and ginger. I mean, these are hot oils. And with pets, absolutely. Absolutely. As long as the brand is safe. I know Young Living is safe. Currently downstairs, I am diffusing Christmas spirit, cinnamon, orange, and spruce. Can't get much hotter than that. I diffuse thieves. It's got cinnamon and clove, lemon, eucalyptus, rosemary, all pretty hot oils. And if my cats don't like it, they can go to another part of the house because I don't infuse my entire home at the same time with oils. So go light in the diffuser. Make sure that there's place in your, in your house where they can go where there's no essential oils and then monitor their response. What's interesting, my cats are always in the room where I'm diffusing. They are so used to it now. So don't worry about those holiday scents. Now, if you have a holiday scent from a store, if you've got scented pine cones, scented um, reed diffusers, if you've got sprays and plugins and candles, those are absolutely detrimental to animals, period, flat out. They are synthetic fragrances and they are dangerous and damaging. And I'm seeing a large number of pets with um, respiratory issues, asthma, things like that. And so look to those scents that are in your home, including cleaners. So this is why, I mean, I have checked out so many different brands. I used all the wrong things in the past. And I can't believe I didn't kill us all in the process. But I absolutely trust Young Living and they, and they back their products for animals. So maybe you need calming oils in the diffuser, especially if people are over and your dogs are getting like overly excited and anxious and you know, your cats are hiding under the bed, use some calming oils like Peace and Calming. That's a big one. That's a really good one for pets. Uh, the Tea Away oil in the Animal Sense line. That's a, that's a really, really good one too. Or Lavender. I mean, they, these are just really solid calming oils. And again, I like to let the pet choose because just like us, they're going to like some oils and they're not going to like other ones. So I literally open up the bottle and I wave it about a foot away from them. And if they come to it to smell it, that is, that is a big sign that they're interested. 
because as soon as I open it, they can smell it. They can even smell it before I open it. So just let them choose. Now, I'm also a big believer in keeping our pets well from the inside out. And there can be a lot of digestive issues in pets based on what they eat. Rudy's here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see him. Um, but especially if they do get into holiday food, I mean, stuff happens. So, you know, you may have something sitting on the kitchen counter and next thing you know, it's on the floor and everybody's surrounding it, eating it. If your pets are just intaking Ningxia Red every day, this does so much to balance all the body systems in our pets. And I start slow with just maybe five, six, seven drops of it in wet food. I run a little water over it, mix it in, and that's great. But cats like Rudy, you know, we're, we're working on some very preventative, proactive things with Rudy because he had bladder stones um, about two and a half years ago. Why am I looking at him like he's going to tell me? <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's crazy what I just did. Um, so we're just being very proactive with the pH levels in his body. So he gets like a full dropper um, every day. But this is one thing that I'm a big believer in being proactive. And this is a proactive measure with Ning Charette. And it's totally safe. I mean, my cats have been on it. Rudy's been on it for seven years. And his lab values get better and better each year. And then here's a, here's a really fun tip, uh, especially if you live in a northern climate where it gets cold and maybe um, you get snow and ice, but you need to go out and walk your dog, unless you got little booties for your dog. One thing that can really help is the animal sense ointment on the paws. So you'll have to, you'll have to test out whether it's good to put it on before the walk or after the walk. Every dog is different, but definitely after the walk, it's very soothing, you know, especially if they're walking on salt, you know, you know, a salted, you know, driveway or sidewalk. That is such a nourishing thing for their paws. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. So those are just some basic things that you can do. You know, it doesn't need to be complicated. Calming oils, Ningxia Red, have that animal sense ointment on standby for the paws. All right. So, all right. And we're coming to an end and, and I'm going to take questions in just a little bit, but I, I wanted to give you guys, you're, you guys are the first to know about this. It is actually in progress. I don't have the web page ready, but next year, which is not that far away, it's like six weeks away, I am going to be running a program called the Sacred Shift because we've definitely been in a shift this year. It's not gonna be over. In fact, this, the, the work that we need to do energetically I feel is all happening in 2021. And so this is a program where each month there's gonna be a specific topic, but we are going to spend the time working with the energies, learning how to flow with all the energies around us and using all sorts of tools, such as healing foods, essential oils, crystals, working with the chakras, intuition, mindset techniques. Everybody's gonna find their ascending animal totem. If you don't know what that means, you will find out. And just so much more. And so stay tuned, it's gonna come. I will definitely launch it on my Facebook page, on my Instagram page. Um, or if you, if you get the Manifested Harmony newsletter, it'll come in that, but this, I'm hoping I'm going to have this ready in about a week to launch, but it's going to be exciting where it's just going to be an amazing collective where we're going to come together and really work with this because I have really watched this year what the energies are doing 
and how we did things in the past no longer work. And the successes that we had in the past, those strategies don't work anymore. And this is all about learning how to work with the energies. And we're going to do this together. So it's going to be exciting. I'm so excited. I can hardly stand it. So, all right. So I am going to go ahead and bring this recording to a close. So thank you for joining in. I really appreciate you all being here. And if you have questions, you know where to find me on social media. <laughs>